Hi, this is Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager at EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's aptly named Tip of the Week. This week I'm going to show you how to create title blocks on formats using table functionality and you'll see why this is the best way of doing it, I think. Now how many of you have seen a format before where somebody's got a nice title block like this and they've got all these different fields filled in and wonder, hey, how the heck did they do that? Well, as you may have known, whenever you want to do fill in some sort of parameter that will populate automatically in your formats, like drawing name or number of sheets, that sort of thing, it has to be in a table cell. And normally, what you get out of the box is something like this, where it's actually lines on a drawing, it's not a table. So if I would want this to populate any of these fields, I would have to, have to go to the table functionality and go, boy, I want to insert a new table right here and then I'd have to fool around with the size and, and change its properties and try and get it to fit where I want the stuff to show up. Well that's kind of a pain in the tail. So what we're going to do is show you how to create a table that looks like a title block step by step. So what we've got here, if you go to the bottom, this is what we want to wind up with. It's one section of the uh, title block, it's the rightmost one, with things like title, all that good stuff. But when you look at this and sort through it, you can see, hey, this is actually a table. It's got, uh, if you can see, four columns. It's got a bunch of different rows and different cells. But how do I start with a table and get to where I want to go? Well, let's go with what we started with. Based on what we need in the table and the cells we need, we want four columns, six rows. Great. Well, how do I get from this basic table and start doing it step by step? Well, the first step to get from here to the next is we got to play with the size of these things. I'm going to take that column and change its width. And let's make that, say, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to take this next column, change its width, make it larger accordingly. So you can see how we're starting to shape the basic size of the table to what we want to see when we're done. We'll make that inch and three quarters as well. And lastly, play with the width of this last column. And we start doing things with the rows. For example, like this first row is this piece and that's going to be three quarters of an inch so let's see what the height of that cell is and don't worry folks I'm not going to go through all of these this next one has to be smaller it's going to be just a quarter of an inch and eventually we do that with all of these cells and we wind up with something like this well great you can look at this and go well it's starting to be about the right size but I still you know it's, it's the wrong shape how do I get start getting with these cells to where I get them in the shapes I want like this. Well, there's a tool right here where I start merging cells. That's just like Excel. I make two cells out of one. Merge that. Let's take this three right here. Merge those. And where this title is going to be over here, let's take all four of those together merge those as well. We're getting closer and closer and I've got this piece right here. It's getting, you know, it's starting to get recognizable. And how do I get this piece to start looking like this? Well, that's easy. Just double click those cells and since it's a table, it'll load up and let me type in text. And in just a second, the text editor will pop up. There we go. And that block has got to say title. We'll play with a text style or where it sits in there. Let's say what's left and I want it in the middle of that cell. There it adds right there and I say OK. And I just start doing that a piece at a time. That's going to be for the size of the drawing. OK. So eventually we populate these with the text we have and we get to this point where it's starting to look pretty good but uh, yeah, I don't have any of my parameters yet. I don't have any of my uh, my things I want automatically filled out with properties. To do that, we want it to start to look like this. Well, how do we get to that point? 
well, we just keep going. Let's say I want this to be the title. And there's a parameter it can get from the model. Let's say we have a parameter created called title. And actually, important safety tip here, I generally enter these in lowercase when I'm looking for automatic query parameters. Sometimes it's sensitive about that. And let's say we want that to be a little larger, two-tenths of an inch. We can preview where that sits. Well, I don't want it in the upper left. I want it in the center, middle. There we go. And we start doing it with all the rest of these parameters. Now, Creo Parametric has things built in for the format size. Here's a drawing rev parameter from the model. It also can do current sheet of total sheets. And you can do that uh, in one field where I can say, at current sheet space, and it's going to recognize that since there's a space and that's a parameter of, and then ampersand total sheets. So that'll automatically populate. So we're getting closer. We've got something that looks like this now. We're doing it step by step. One little neat trick is how do I put a symbol in a, in a title block like that? Well, I've got the symbol sitting on the format, and as long as I have that symbol used on the format, I can use it to populate tables. I can erase it later. I don't have to keep it there forever, and it's called EAC T block. So what I would do is double click on here, and that ampersand sim is the code, and in parentheses, the name of the symbol itself. Once I've done that, I've got that set up in the cell. And because I have the size of this symbol related to text size, I can change the text size and change the size of the symbol. So it allows you flexibility in playing with the symbol. I can say I want it to be the center, middle of that cell. There we go. Now what's nice about that, and I can erase that symbol. I don't have to show it on the format anymore. But as long as I add that symbol to any format I'm going to use this table in, it's legal and it'll recognize it. What's nice about that as well is that symbol moves with the table. Wherever I paste it, wherever I use it, I'm good. One of the last steps, so I've got it to look like this. You know, what's the last step to get rid of the bits I don't need? Well, I grab this table and I right click line display. I can actually blank lines. You know, I want to not see all these extra lines in there that are from the table. So I literally just pick on all those and we'll leave that as good for now. And we wind up in the end with something like this. Now this table, since it knows the format size by that parameter, I can paste this little symbol on any format I'm going to create then I can put this table in. It'll automatically know the size and everything. So let's go to the format we've made from this. And all we have is a format with those lines deleted. This pasted in the corner. So let's create a drawing from that and watch how this all works. Let's create a new drawing. I'll imaginatively call it new drawing. And I've got a part loaded up, and I'm going to say empty with format. I'm going to grab that format from my working directory here and say OK. Now there you can see it populated with the name of the part, the rev from the part. There's that new drawing name. It knows it's sheet one of one. It knows the scale of the drawing, and it knows the size of the drawing. So I don't have to change this table for each different size title block I put in there. Now, if you have any questions on this technique or anything else, please contact me or one of the other people here at EAC Product Development Solutions. Have a great day.